Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we give you thanks for this opportunity to worship this morning. We pray that the spirit that is moving among us will also stir within us so that as we leave this place, we may go forth to bear Christ into the world. Amen. Background animals. They used to be thought of as cheap and disposable Hollywood props. Then an organization called the American Humane Association got into the act and opened a Hollywood office to enforce standards for the protection of animals on movie sets. In the 1950s, they sponsored the first of annual Patsy Award ceremony. The performing animal top star of the year was the Academy Award for animals from 1951 to 1986. Francis the Mule was the first Patsy Award winner in 1951 and later winners included Roy Rogers Horse Trigger and Arnold the Pig from Green Acres. If the Performing Animal Top Star of the Year Award had been around in first century, century Jerusalem, the animal that would have carried Jesus certainly would have been a winner. This donkey is a patsy. When Jesus enters Jerusalem on the day we now celebrate as Palm Sunday, this donkey plays her role as intended. Palm Sunday is one of those days, however, when our familiarity with the story may keep us from really paying close attention to the true meaning of the story. We're used to hearing of the excitement, children running back and forth between their parents, cloaks being spread on the ground, palm branches being joyously waved in the air, people shouting Hosanna as Jesus makes his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. All four gospels tell the same story with different details. And this year we hear from Mark. Our gospel reading this morning is the beginning of Mark's account of Jesus last week, Mark's passion narrative. Jesus and his disciples are coming to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. As they make their way from Bethpage to Bethany near the Mount of Olives into Jerusalem, Jesus commissions two of his disciples telling them, go into the village ahead of you. And immediately as you enter, you will find there tied a colt that has never been written, ridden. Untie it and bring it to me. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. The colt was brought to Jesus and they threw their cloaks on it and he sat on it and rode into the city. Now donkeys were usually ridden by kings on their coronation day and by conquerors when they wanted to assure the newly occupied people that they came in peace. A colt that had never been ridden recalls the word of the prophet Zechariah about the coming of ruler of God's people. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Jesus comes into Jerusalem from the east, from the Mount of Olives, where Jewish tradition held that the Messiah would appear in the last days. And he comes during Passover the highest of the Jewish festivals, celebrating God's deliverance of his people from slavery in Egypt. Pilgrims from all over the Roman Empire would have been in the crowd that day for the festival. And so it was likely a mixed bag of people from all walks of life who thronged the road to see Jesus come into the city. Mark tells us that the procession was festive with many people spreading their cloaks and leafy branches on the road. They shout an acclamation of God's blessing. Hosanna, meaning save now. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. So what is the meaning of the palm branches that they wave? During the Maccabean revolt a century before, the Jews led by Judas Maccabeus 
had risen up and driven their Greek rulers out of Jerusalem. During that brief period of self-government that followed, the Maccabeans minted a victory coin with palm branches on it. And yet their triumph was short-lived. The Romans soon replaced the Greeks, wiping out all hope of Jewish independence. The Romans eventually minted their own victory coin. On it was the image of a Jewish slave kneeling before a Roman soldier. And across the top of the coin was a broken palm branch. So to the people in the crowd that day in Jerusalem, the palms were not a harmless symbol of rejoicing. They are a political provocation, waved as a deliberate symbol of the crowd's defiance of their Roman overlords. The Messiah that the crowd had been waiting for was going to tear down the current government and establish a new kingdom. It's no wonder that the that crowd waved palm branches and greeted Jesus with such enthusiasm. To them, this dramatic entrance meant that he was finally claiming his kingship, which he was. But they did not understand that his kingdom would not come about the way they expected. Jesus comes not as one who lords his authority over others, but as one who humbly rejects earthly power. He comes not with ceremony and wealth, but as one identified with the poor. He comes not as a mighty warrior, but as one who is peaceful and refuses to rely on violence. And only Jesus knows that this triumphal procession is also his funeral procession. The frenzy that developed around Jesus that day comes to an anticlimactic end. Jesus visits the temple as the crowd would have expected him to do. But unlike in Matthew and Luke, where Jesus enters the temple and dramatically throws the money changers out, in Mark, Jesus simply looks around, decides it's late, and goes back to Bethany. To the crowd, that would seem rather anticlimactic finish to such an exciting day. But here, Mark highlights the fact that at the very moment, the crowds seem at last to recognize who Jesus is and are eager to affirm his identity. Jesus chooses to emphasize that he is not the kind of king that they are expecting. Jesus will return to Jerusalem with his disciples the next day, but when he returns, he will not get the same welcome. And the next time a crowd gathers around Jesus, he will be standing in front of, a crowd, in front of the crowd at the palace of Pontius Pilate, the governor of the Roman governor of Judea, as a common criminal. After being arrested and tried in a sham trial by the Jewish religious authorities, and turned over to Pilate for execution as a criminal. And instead of shouting Hosanna, the crowds would be shouting crucify him. And we have no king but Caesar. The week that began with such hopeful expectation and excitement will end with Jesus crucified, dead, and buried in a borrowed tomb. We know this story. And as dramatic as it is, what does it have to do with us and the way we live today? Well, perhaps the answer can be found where we began, with the donkey, the participant in the parade that is often overlooked, except for her symbolic role. This animal can teach us a lot because she is the creature who carries Christ. That's what it's all about, carrying Christ into the world. The donkey was a Christ bearer or a Christopher, derived from the Greek word Christos, 
Christ combined with Pharaoh to bear. Incidentally, tradition says that before the day when this donkey carried Christ, donkeys were simply plain gray or brown. But after that day, they were all marked with the sign of the cross, which goes over their shoulders and down their back and neck. So carrying Christ left a permanent mark of honor on them. So today is the opportunity for us to take the name Christopher as our own. By doing so, we commit to bearing Christ into the world. Being a Christopher means serving Christ humbly, not worrying about who gets the glory. Following Christ's direction, being willing to go where he wants to go, not where we want to go. Never asking Christ to get off our back. Being obedient to the one who holds the reins. As we carry Christ into the world, we are challenged to do a particular kind of work and to live a distinctively different lifestyle that marks us as Christ bearers as countercultural in our time as Jesus was in his. So being a Christopher also means, instead of seeking to be blessed, we are to be a blessing to others. Receiving love, yes, but giving more back. Love your enemies, not just your friends. Love your neighbor no matter who that neighbor is or how different from you they may be. Instead of seeking to be served, be a servant to others. Instead of seeking others, uh, instead of speaking, seeking honors, practice humility. Practicing forgiveness again and again and again, even when it, even and perhaps especially when you would rather hold a grudge. Instead of always trying to be first, practice being last. Instead of taking, practice generosity. And to save your life, lose it to something bigger and greater than yourself. And the only way we can hope to live this way as if, is if we, above all, love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. If we can pull this off, modeling our lives after the example of that humble donkey, we will discover the joy that comes from being Christ bearers. So are you a Christopher? There's no greater role you could be asked to play. Amen. <laughs>